the gear again. Teach us, teach us, teach us. Show us from your word in the name of Jesus. Your plans, your purpose for us, instruct us by your word. May we have encounters with your word. Word in season, word in season. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Open to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love Him. This passage is loaded with so many sermons, but I just speak out one heart of man. So the title of this message is Understanding the Heart of Man. Understanding the Heart of Man. What is the heart of man? What is the heart of man? The heart of man is the controlling or ruling center of man. The heart of man is the controlling or ruling center of man. From the heart you control things. From the heart you rule life. It's a ruling center. Of man. The heart of man is the core or center where man makes his plans, where man makes commitments and decisions. The heart of man is the inner center where man divides his plans. It could be negative, it could be positive. The heart of man. No wonder the Bible says, My son, give me thy heart. Give me your heart. Until a heart is given unto the Lord, that heart is susceptible to all manner of evil. The heart of man. The heart of man. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 9, the Bible says, a man's heart devised his way, but the Lord directed his steps. The heart of man devised his way. In your heart you make plans. I will do this, I will do that. It's not open to everybody except you speak it out. Do you understand? Whatever goes on in your heart except you voice it out. Nobody will be aware except God and you yourself. Like you all seated here. What goes on in your heart, nobody knows. If God should open people's, I mean, get, uh, make you have access to your friend's heart, <laughs> you may not have that friend again. God has done it in such a way that you are the only one that knows the content of your heart. And God Almighty, who is the maker of the heart? And we just have to understand the verdict of the man or the creator who made the heart. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The Bible says, the heart of man is deceitful above all things. The heart of man is desperately wicked. He said, who can know it? That's to say, who can fathom it? Who can understand it? The heart of man. Good can come from the heart of man. Evil can 
come up from the heart of man. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus teaching powerfully in this passage from the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 18 to 19. Jesus said, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, mothers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Look at Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 12, verse 34 to 35. Matthew 12, verse 34 to 35. Oh, generation of white, uh, vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart was speaking. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, does what? Bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. So when you see a man behaving evil, just know that the heart had conceived that evil. The thought that comes out from that heart is evil. The plan that comes out from that person is evil. I pray that your heart will not be described as desperately wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Except the heart of man is renewed. Except the heart of man is regenerated. Or circumcised by the law, the heart is capable of conceiving evil things which could produce evil outcomes. We need to give our hearts unto the Lord for circumcision. We need to give our heart unto the Lord for renewal. Because if we don't do so, our heart will become a center where evil things are concocted with a view to releasing them for practical reality. Whatever you are doing now, you have thought about it some time ago in your heart. No wonder your heart is the engine of your life. We're not talking about biological or physiological heart. Now I hope you know that. Yeah, because the physiological heart, the biological heart, is where blood is being pumped to all the vital organs, to every part of your body. Physiologically, the heart is the center of man. That's why God forbid if any man has heart attack, it will only require a miracle for that person to be alive. And I decree right now, no member of this church will suffer heart attack. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will not suffer heart attack. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the first service, a woman gave a testimony of how God delivered her husband. When she heard uh, prophetically from the other, there shall be no loss of life. And she was just on her own. She had a phone call. Are you kidding? Can you call? Can you call? He said, yes. He said, your husband is what? He said, see that In the car. They don't know what was going wrong uh, with him. 
and she ran to the place. Lo and behold, the husband was too weak to even drive, to even talk, to be anything. The high blood pressure was too much. That would have resulted to heart attack. Is it 200 and something or what? 280 into 5. Can you imagine that? God sustained the man. He's recuperating now. No member of this commission will suffer heart attack. Yeah. Mineral. 
take, 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 take. And some people will just stay there, galop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Receive wisdom to be healthy. Yeah. I said, receive wisdom to be healthy. Yeah. Receive wisdom to be healthy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Please, I want to give you five things that you must understand about your heart. How many things? Five, five things. Number one, understand that your heart will be where your treasure is. Your heart will be where? Where your treasure is. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 6 verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Have you heard about some people who died out of heart attack because a particular bank collapsed? Yes. <laughs> Have you heard about the fact that some people got paralyzed, got into coma because MMM failed? <laughs> Honestly, I'm telling you. I know a particular individual who took loan. No, truly. From her cooperatives. To invest in MMM. Often now that I'm talking to you, MMM has collapsed and she's still paying the money, the loan that she took. It was a foolishness. foolishness. They have gone, ripped Nigerians that they have gone. Other people have come now with another name. Yes. But the same set of foolish Nigerians, yes. they are still going to put money. <laughs> Their heart was in MMM. Their heart was in the bank. Wherever your treasure is, your heart will be there. Do you know why you think about a particular person, particularly your love, your wife or your husband, most of the time, because that person is your treasure. If Jesus Christ is your treasure, your heart will not be with Jesus. You will always think about Jesus. You will always imagine Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is your treasure. It's where you have kept all your treasures. Your heart will be full of the things of the world. But I can tell you, if you are investing in the kingdom of God through evangelism, giving for evangelism, investing in the things of God, your heart will always be there. Do you know why you forget to come to church early? Because your heart is not there. That's the honest truth I'm telling you. Nobody reminded you to meet up uh, uh, or, or, or to meet that appointment at the American Embassy. Nobody. Nobody reminded you to be at the airport two hours before international departure of your flight. Nobody. But if you carelessly make a mistake, I can tell you that your heart, only God will deliver you from the heart. Because the way your heart will be pumping what, uh, what do you call it? Blood. You are running pam 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 pam. There was a day we were coming from uh, the local um, side of the uh, of, uh, airport. You know, it's from there you connect with the international. It's not now that they have done the road now. It's so good now. So we're coming like this, and there was this go slow. We saw international travelers carrying their bag, and they were just running, running, 
Some old people. They're just, uh, uh, they're some calling the thing on their head. It was just running, running, kita, 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 kita. They don't want to miss the flight. But this same set of people, service is starting by 8 o'clock, by 7.30 or by 7. That's the time when they will ask for a cup of tea. You are an irresponsible worshiper. Irresponsible. That's the honest truth. What you cannot give to your governor, don't give to God. What you cannot give to your president, don't give to God. God is higher than your president. God is higher than your president. God is higher than your governor. Can you see the reason why you are at the same spot or why things are not happening for you the way they should happen for you? Because you denigrate God, you despise God. You look down on God as if God is your mate. But my God is not my mate. I give him the priority of my life. I give him the prime of my life. I was telling someone the other day, they said, if I had known that I will have a call to ministry, oh God, when I gave, my, gave you my life at the age of 17, I would have entered ministry immediately. Maybe I won't be at this level now. Give God your best. And you cannot give God your best if it does not come from your heart. 